Macintosh has been making integrated amplifiers for 40 plus years now. Started off with units like the MA1700, then moved more towards the integrated with a tuner in it. After that, we slowly morphed back to just integrateds. This year, Macintosh has introduced five new integrateds into the category. MA9000, MA8900, MA7200, MAC7200, and MA5300. Starting with the MA5300, we provide 100 watts into 8 ohms and 160 watts into 4 ohms. Moving up from there, the MA and the MAC7200 and the MA8900 both provide a 200 watt stereo amplifier, which are also coupled with output autoformers. Moving up to the high end would be the MA9000 with 300 watts autoformer coupled outputs. The advantage an autoformer gives is that it isolates the amplifier section from your loudspeaker, but in a good way. It allows us to design a solid state amplifier section which drives a known load in the autoformer, and then the autoformer can either drive 8 ohm, 4 ohm, or 2 ohm speaker load. The thing about Macintosh and the way they design any of the products, it doesn't matter if it's an integrated or pre-amplifier or a power amplifier, the same circuit topology is in the integrateds that's in also our separates. The nice thing about the integrateds is, A, it's a complete package. The nice thing about the separates is, obviously if you have less going on inside of one box so we can get better specifications, and that separates also give you more flexibility but 90% of the Macintosh customers always start out with an integrated. The reason why Macintosh introduced two 7200s, the MA is purely an integrated. MAC is a integrated with a tuner module into it. The reason why we do both is in some parts of the world, AM and FM is still popular, like the US for instance, where outside the US, more popular is the MA version versus the MAC. Building upon the five-year success of the previous line, we were able to update the control platform, the digital audio platform, and also in the amplifier section, we were able to use more high-precision thin film resistors, which enabled us to give a more consolidated, condensed design to improve signal performance. Compared to our previous models that use conventional two-channel DACs, our new digital audio module uses an 8-channel DAC, which is used in a quad balance configuration for ultimate low noise and high performance. The digital audio module can also receive DSD audio signals from your computer all the way up to DSD-256 and also DXD-384 kilohertz. The MA9000 has both moving magnet and moving coil phono connections, which are totally adjustable for both resistance and capacitance. It provides an 8-band EQ to tailor the sound to your liking and in the off position is totally bypassed. Another feature that we added to the units, the ability to easily update the operating firmware over USB from a computer. In the past, it was kind of a bear but now with a simple USB connection to a PC running a utility, a dealer or even a customer if need be can update the operating firmware to either fix a bug if one is found or to add a feature. What I personally enjoyed was adding the new control architecture and also adding the interface to the digital audio module, you know, trying to make that truly module where in the past it was integrated on the main board and you know you got what you got so trying to totally separate that digital audio module and trying to look forward ahead to you know what might come and how to be able to swap that out without forgetting lines and power supplies and making sure all the hooks are there to provide features into the future ultimately the role of an audio engineer is to give the customer what they want but in the end, what we found is that giving the customer what they want is really also building the type of product that we would want for ourselves at home and for our families. I think what makes the Macintosh brand special 
is really the long tenure of employees that we have at Macintosh. We have 152 employees between R&D and manufacturing, but really if you look at each of the employees that have an average tenure of 20, 22 years, we have some employees that have been here for more than 40 years. They've really seen generational changes of the product and actually watched the company move from vacuum tube era to solid state era to different um, elements of technology for where we get the music from, whether it be CD, cassette, LP, to now streaming. So when you look at the entire scope of what's behind Macintosh, it's really the people.